Hi guys, um, just a quick video on iDevices, um, my thoughts on them um, and using them in the DJ environment. So, I'll stop that, okay. A quick, uh, just have a quick look at what we've got on the desk. We've got a Gemini FX7000 mixer. It's a second hand unit that I bought uh, specifically for these devices. I've got an iPad 1, 16 gig, uh, Wi-Fi 3GS, uh, sorry 3G. I've got an iPhone 3GS, 16 gig, and I've got two applications. I've got iDJ Now running on the iPhone, which is a new Mark product, and I've got DJ for iPad, which is an algorithm uh, product. I've got a pair of Newmark PHX headphones, and most importantly, a cup of tea. Is that quite long? Mm. Splendid. Right, let's have a look at what we've got going on here. First of all, let's look at the iPhone. The iPhone app that I've got running is one by Newmark. It's called IDJ Now. Um, the simplest way of describing it is it's Mixmeister for the iDevice. Okay, um, I've got here my tracks and I've just selected to show the, uh, the transitions as well. So you've got the standard transmission, uh, transitions sudden, uh, such as Beat Mix 8. Um, you can custom Beat Mix them, so that's moving the intro and outro points. Um, and bass swap. There's various standard transitions available and you can then customize it. If you rotate the screen, you go to a much more familiar Mixmeister style layout where it shows you all your tracks and if it'll let me, there we go. You can see the intro and outro points there of those two tracks which can be adjusted manually if need be. Now the reason I have this in the system and in fairness I actually take it along with my other setups as well such as my CDJs which are in the flight case here um, or my laptop if I'm running Virtual DJ or Tractor my MIDI controllers and so on. I put it into a spare channel on the mixer just in case anything goes wrong. I've got this as a backup, it's a fail safe. I can just push the play button and start, you know, push some music back out while I sort the problem out. The cable I'm using is a standard 3.5mm uh, stereo to twin phonos. So there's two RCA connections on the other side which go into, on this particular mixer, go into channel 2, which is the center channel. Put that in. So if I press play on there, there we go. That's about an hour long mix I did. Um, I've done that previously and I always take it just in case. So I've got a couple of mixes on there that I use depending on the style of music I'm playing that evening. Um, the mixer, if we just have a quick look at this, it's a Gemini FX7000. It's a three channel mixer with an effects unit built in. Picked it up second hand off eBay. Um, I like the brushed alloy finish and the fact it's got an effects processor in. Um, I'll explain why I wanted an effects processor built in um, because of the um, iPad application. I also have various other effects units but they're rack mounted and I tend to use those for more resident um, instances. The iPad, this is the main focus really of this video and this application called DJ for iPad. What we've got is a traditional two-deck turntable style layout. It's much different from the Tractor or Virtual DJ or um, Serato style layouts, which we're becoming more and more familiar with nowadays. Um, you're back to two decks. And a lot of the controls that you would um, associate with Tractor, Virtual DJ, Serato have gone. Certainly with Tractor and Virtual DJ, um, there's no method of, uh, there's no beat grid synchronization. Saying that, algorithm do actually state that if you tap the sync button repeatedly, it will actually sync up the beat grids. I'll be perfectly honest with you, I've not had much success with that, so I tend not to use it, but I don't use it at all. I use the sync purely to bring the BPMs up to match each other. Um, and because there's no key lock, you want to be using BPMs that are very close to each other anyway. Um, I mean, the 10% rule, I wouldn't even go that far. You know, maybe two or three BPMs either way, I think is about the limit. Otherwise you start to get that, you know, the Boris Karloff, Alvin the Chipmunk sort of sound going on. If we look at the app itself, what we've got is um, two deck controls, they're replicated both sides, and then we've got some general controls which cover the more uh, general aspects of the application. Quickly look at um, the controls for the decks. We have a volume control and a, U, a VU meter. You can see that I'm going up and down. I've got the crossfader off at the minute. 
and we've got stop we've got a, a button for additional options which I'll show you in a moment BPM reading a pitch slider a sync button and a push and pull button we've got a start and stop button we've also got a slow start and slow stop if I actually bring the sound up on this one when I press the stop button or the play button again you can hear there's just a little bit of a wind down if I start it it's immediate now if I use the little light button here it will wind itself up okay and if I push it again much much longer slow down okay we have at the bottom here the initial cue point setting which is the white dot and also a cue button we've got a crossfader and an auto mix button the auto mix button is for mixing between the playing and non-playing decks it's one of the features I don't use, um, I, so I won't go into the description of it. There's plenty of other information about that. Because I'm using an external mixer, I've got the crossfader all the way to one side. Um, the reason for that is, and I'm going to go into the settings menu, is because I'm using the split output. Now, the split output takes the output from deck A and pushes it through the left-hand channel of the stereo output, takes the output of deck B, pushes that through the right-hand channel of the stereo output effectively creating two mono outputs. Now the crossfader is over to the left because I don't want both tracks to be audible at the same time. I'm going to use my physical mixer and the crossfader attached to that to crossfade between the two. Whilst we're in the settings we can have a quick look at the further settings. We've got transitions which is for the auto mix. The speed slider we have three different settings for that so the range we can adjust the range of the slider so the pitch slider we can invert it and we can add, the, uh, add in the fine adjust setting. Song loading, we can play immediately, jump to a specific cue point or the, the primary cue point, and we can reset the EQ on loading. Now, I'll, I'll show you the EQs in a moment. The vinyl, we can show a tape marker. So if I select that on, you can just you can see there's a tape marker across these discs now. I don't have it on. And we can show the artwork on the label. Now, I've got that selected on, but there's no artwork being shown. Because these are promo tracks, um, there's no artwork for them. So it's just showing you the default vinyl graphic that um, is applied by the application. We've also got the library. Now, I use a full screen library. Okay, if I switch that off, and I show you the library button, which is these buttons either side of the decks, that's in non-full screen. The drawback with that is it doesn't show you the BPMs. So if we go back into settings, go into library, put full screen on, now select that. We can now see a much, much broader view of the tracks that we've got listed. These are in my iPod section of the iPad. They're not, you know, uploaded to some server and downloaded to the iPad via some HTTP method. Simply a case of rip the discs into iTunes, plug the device in, transfer them onto the device, and that's it. The calculations that uh, the DJ for iPad application then does, the first time it encounters a new track, is it creates the waveform, it creates a computer, uh, CBG, a computer beat grid, and it also works out the beats per minute. Now, so while we're on that, if we go into the um, library, one of the issues that's currently facing this application is the fact that it doesn't always calculate the BPMs correctly. I've got one here, for example, that's calculated 88 beats per minute, but it isn't. I know that that's 130 because I've got it printed on the promo disc. And also other applications such as BPM Analyzer, Tractor, Virtual DJ and other applications I use have all reported it at the correct BPM. As it stands at the minute, there's no method of correction, but algorithm are aware of it and I believe that they are trying to solve that issue. Have a quick look into the effects, or sorry, the EQ, not effects, EQ section. This has various the EQ section is probably the wrong description because it does other feature, has other features as well. In the EQ tab, we've got low, mid and high EQs and gain. Now, I have those all across, set flat across the board because I'm going to use the external mixer to control those. And in the next section, we have auto. We have the loop section, which is first page is auto loop. So four beats it's currently set at and it goes from one sixteenth of a beat to 32 beats. So you just press the button and wherever it is, the play, wherever the... Um, playhead is it will just start looping from that point onwards the next page within the looping section is manual loop so in out and re-loop 
and the next page is bounce loop. Now I'll actually play the track so you can hear what this does. When I press the buttons, it will loop of loop that value only whilst the button's pressed. Okay. You can create some strange effects with that. Okay, let's stop that. Then the last panel is, that's all the loops done, this last panel is the additional cue points. There's primary cue point, which is the white cue point at the base of the uh, screen, and then you have three additional cue points that you can set at any point during the, the song. Now, there's two methods of moving around a song um, or track. You can either grab the, um, you pull your finger and grab the playhead along the waveform, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set a cue point there. So if I, you see the cue point's now set there. If I just get rid of that panel a sec and move the disc, you can see a little red dot where that cue point is. Now, if I want to delete that cue point, I just press and hold the set button until it disappears. That's true of all the cue point systems within this application. The system for one deck is the same as the system for the other deck. So if you know one deck, you know both decks. You, with, as I said, you can move through the track by moving your finger along the waveform, or you can just grab the tone arm. Now you probably won't see it on the video, but there's a little orange stripe that moves along the waveform as you move the tone arm, so you can see where the tone arm is going to be within the track. Okay. Other buttons or other features are we've got a record button that just records what you do. Simple as that. Records it into the iPad, into the into the application's device file folder, and you can retrieve that using iTunes, um, uh, as you do with many applications nowadays. Now, let's have a quick chat about this this cabling, because bear with me one second. Just want to move this power socket out of the way. If I put that down there, there we go. That'll do for the moment. Right. Let's talk about this cabling. This is to create the split output from the iPad. What we have is a three and a half mil stereo connector, which goes into the iPad. And then following down, we have a stereo to two phono connections. So that's gonna break each channel into its own separate line. And then on each of those, I have another splitter. So it's a male phono to female phono, which splits that single mono output from here into two identical outputs or two identical signals, just so I can feed two signals into the mixer. Okay, so all together, that's what that little unit looks like. These parts are just bought from Radio Shack and Maplins, so they're easily available. Um, you can buy them on the net. There's one, um, I forget its name, that's from a German supplier. Um, very nice looking piece of kit, um, but quite expensive. Right, I'll just put that on there and plug that back in. The stand for the iPad, incidentally, is just a stand I bought from Tesco's. Um, I just happened to like the look of it and it was 25 quid. Right, with regards to the application itself, um, you don't get the functions that you would expect in uh, Virtual DJ or Tractor, where you push a sync button and everything suddenly syncs up nice and neatly, um, either beat or beat and phase. There are other applications on the iDevices that will allow you to do that. Um, QPlay DJ is certainly one of those. So how do you do it on this? Well, I'm afraid it's back to the old school. You've got to be able to beat mix by ear. Now, one of the tricks is to set up your cue point on the downbeat. So you know when you press the button that you're going to be on the beat, okay? So if we get this track playing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the tone arm across and just find a rough, a rough point within the track. Grab my headphones. Now, I've got the crossfader all the way over to the left hand deck on the mixer, which is just out of frame, I believe. And then I'm going to use the Q button to try to get at the point. Now, I tend to tap on the screen, it's just my way of doing it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right, let's take the bass out on that side. A little bit of push. Take the 
face out on the outgoing deck. And so I'm moving the cross fader across to the incoming deck. Bit more bass out, just want to leave that little melody in there. And there we go. It's a very simple demonstration, not saying it was perfect, but there we go. Right. One thing I will quickly show you is why I have the, um, I'll show you a kind of real world instance of why I have the iPhone in. So what we'll do is we'll be playing, we're playing happily along with our DJ for iPad and suddenly it goes wrong. Oh God, quick, press the button on the iPhone. Okay, now I've got an hours mix available to me that I've predetermined that allows me to then sort out this problem so I can start working out what's going wrong. Um, I can use the PFLs on the mixer to try and you know get the sound back out or restart the um, iPad or restart the app or whatever else, whatever you know issues come up. Um, that's about it really. Didn't worry really go into too much, but um, hope you enjoy. Take care. Bye.